Welcome back, guys. Um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody that's out there. Thanks for the support once again. I wanted to make a quick video. I don't know how quick it's going to be, but I'm going to try to keep it short and to the point. Um, been getting a lot of questions about getting into the automotive repair industry and how to go about it, what I suggest, uh, what do I think. Just um, it's, a, it's a hard question to answer. All right. It's not for everybody. I'm going to tell you that. It's like anything else. Uh, you know, it's just not for everybody. You have to want to do this. You have to um, you have to be dedicated to the craft uh, to be successful. I think in this industry, a lot of guys get in uh, at one point or another, and then they get out. Uh, you know, or some guys get in later than others. I mean, it's you know, everybody's everybody's different. So uh, all I can tell you is, for me, um, I would say at a relatively young age. I knew that I was going to be doing this and I got into it and I stayed dedicated to it and I put my time in all the, every day to progress okay so if you're not willing to do that you're gonna fall behind especially in today's industry sorry about that uh, especially in today's industry you're gonna fall behind if you're not dedicated I'm gonna to try to get right to the point uh, as far as what do I suggest if you're getting if you're new to the field if you're looking to get in to the industry, you're going to um, you're going to want to get some training. You're not going to want to come in, you know, green, not understanding anything about how things work, uh, trying to learn on the job. Or uh, one mistake that I see guys make, uh, especially at a young age, is to get a, take a job in a quick lube type place, you know, oil changes and you know that sort of stuff, and try to work their way up. Now. That may work for some guys, I don't know. I haven't heard of any that it has worked for personally, but I don't recommend doing that because you get in a rut and you get stuck there. And you're there uh, usually when you get, you know, if you get comfortable in a place, you'll stay there and never progress. And that, that's just not, that's not really getting into the industry. That's just being a guy that changes oil, you know, or changes brakes or does, you know, basic replacement of, you know, maintenance type stuff. If you want to be a tech, and from the questions I'm getting, that's you know mainly what it's aimed at is becoming a real tech, uh, diagnostics tech, I should say. Um, in order to do that, you're going to have to really follow a few you know things. You're going to have to you're going to have to follow a few rules. One, I would highly recommend that you try to get some training beforehand. Meaning, uh, a place like Rosedale uh, Technical College, where like Paul Danner teaches, you know Scanner Danner. Um, I've seen his, you know, I've seen his videos. Obviously, everybody has. Uh, he he's a real teacher. He teaches real world diagnostics. That's the kind of thing you need today. You need to get out and learn. Uh, you need to learn in a classroom if you can first, because in that environment, it's going to be something where mistakes are not going to cost you money and cost you possibly a job. So, in that environment, you have a guy like like Paul who's uh, instructing you and teaching you modern drivability and electrical techniques to diagnose. That is, that is paramount. That's very, very important. You need to be able to uh, get out of that class and understanding, uh, you have to be understanding uh, afterwards of these things. You have to re retain them. You have to understand that he's teaching a lot of stuff with uh, scope testing because uh, modern techs are using scopes more, I think, than any other time in the past. I think it's becoming much more, uh, much more useful now, especially with all the data, uh, you know, network systems and stuff that are incorporated into these cars. So my advice is get a guy like him, if you can, who teaches, pay for the class, and go through the class trying to learn every possible thing you can. We know he's got success stories with students leaving there, becoming uh, very, very good technicians, drivability and otherwise, and you know, being the go-to guys at their shops. It's all because of him uh, and them, because you're going to get out of it what you put into it. If you have a good teacher like Paul, and you don't come out of there knowing your stuff, that's on you, because you know, it speaks for itself. Good teacher, student doesn't pay attention, he's not going to learn. So go into it um, with a good mindset. You know, try to learn as much as you possibly can. Uh, one thing I'm going to tell you is, no matter what anybody teaches you in any classroom, you're never going to know everything. Stay humble. Uh, 
none of us know everything, okay? You know, to guys that don't do this every day and see our videos, uh, you know, I'm not, and I'm not speaking just for myself, I'm speaking for the YouTubers that are doing well, what I'm doing. Uh, anybody who's out there watching these videos, uh, you know, and doesn't have any real knowledge of how systems work, they, you know, they're extremely impressed by the, the things that we do, but what, what you have to understand is it's not something we did, we learned overnight. It's not something that, you know, just we were born with. It's, it's, this is a skill like any other skill out there. Uh, if you're a professional fighter, you know, like, uh, you know, like you're Deontay Wilder, you know, he wasn't born that way, you know what I mean? He's trained for a lot of years, right? So it's the same thing, you know what I mean? You, you, you try to perfect your craft, but anything that anybody will tell you is it never ends when you get out of the classroom. Uh, it, it just progresses, you know what I mean? That's the beginning, and you just keep stepping up and learning. So understand that. This is, uh, it's, it's a different type of industry than most. And I'm not going to say all, but most. Um, you know, if you go and become a lawyer, you know, you pass your bar exam, you're a lawyer. And now you can go and practice law and do what you got to do. Not to say you're not going to learn new things, but it's a little different because the technology behind that doesn't change every year on every make and every model like it does on in this industry. So this industry is difficult to, um, this industry is a difficult one to stay on top of. You have to be very, very dedicated. That's number one. If you cannot, for some reason, get into a class like, uh, you know, like I mentioned with uh, Rosedale, uh, if there's nothing in your area for something like that, I don't recommend, uh, I don't recommend going to a school that does not teach drivability, you know, scan tool use, scope use. If they don't have those type of, uh, those type of things being taught, you're probably wasting your time. That's the truth. Uh, and you're wasting your money. Learning how to change oil, learning the, the very basic uh, things is not going to be enough to get you into a higher level of diagnostic ability. Okay, so you, I mean, I get you have to start, start at the bottom, but if you are that low on the totem pole, so to speak, then your best bet may be to, if you, you know, if you can't get into a place like that, you may want to, uh, you may want to try to get hired in a shop and start doing basic tasks for the shop as an apprentice and have them teach you. Now, of course, you know, age may be a factor here, you know what I mean? If you're 18 years old, just getting into the field, you know, maybe a guy would be more keen on uh, taking you on as an apprentice than if you're a 40 year old guy. I don't know, that all depends on who you know, you know, the guy's attitude, your attitude, you know, a lot of things depend on it. But if you can get into a good shop that does drivability, does electrical, and is proficient at it, you, you know, you, you, could, you could learn on the job from a tech that's willing to take you under his wing or the owner, if, if that's the case. Um, and hopefully, if you do get into it, they have, they offer training as well as far as they could send you to training events, all right? Because through those training events, you're going to learn uh, from the instructors, obviously. But you're also going to be able to network with guys that are like-minded, guys that are out there trying to better themselves, guys that um, will befriend you. And you can work together via Facebook, via YouTube, via, you know, instant messenger, whatever. You can, you can, you know, you can talk via the phone, whatever. Um, you know... And guys, nowadays, I think more than years ago, are willing to help each other. And that's a big, big thing that's changing in the industry. Pay attention to, place, to, to groups like Trained by Tex. Um, you know, Brandon Steckler. If you could find anything with him in your area, I highly recommend it. Uh, Jim Morton, obviously. All these guys that are out there teaching, uh, you know, at a high level. These are the guys that you want to um, to learn from their their uh, their level of knowledge is amazing and they're doing something beyond the training they're doing something with the networking that's that's the big thing that they're preaching to work together help each other just because a guy's across the country doesn't mean that you can't help him you know what I mean um, it's it's all about we're in the same industry, we're in the same field, we're all fighting the same fight, 
we're trying to better ourselves to uh, to take care of customers more proficiently and you know more cost efficiently right the faster we can do a job uh, the better it is for us the customer doesn't lose time with their vehicle you know it's, it's all that type of stuff so there's a lot there's a lot to the business you know I mean a lot of aspects to it my my thing is help each other if you're new to the field look for a place that is willing to work with you to teach you to train you the right way that's key you don't want to fall into a shop that does not do good work because you not being a tech at this point are going to fall into not doing good work it's just the way it works if you're taught wrong you don't know the difference and you're going to do wrong now uh, you know learning this stuff it takes a lot of time um, the that's the that's the first uh, important thing that you have to understand and you have to be willing to go through you're gonna constantly learn or you're gonna become stagnant and you're gonna not be able to stay in the industry proficiently the other thing that I want to talk about is equipment and tools all right that's the other thing you guys need to be aware of if you're getting into this tools and equipment are not cheap now you can go to these places and buy you know like years ago guys would buy craftsman tools that were relatively cheap um, nowadays I I don't know uh, I don't really buy from those places I buy from uh, the tool truck for many many years so I couldn't tell you any good tools that are out there that are cheap because I don't use them what I'm trying to get across here is that when you get into this industry you're never gonna stop buying tools uh, unless you are an oil change guy you know what I mean you're just gonna constantly be buying tools and equipment you're gonna need it shops are not gonna supply you with um, with everything you need you know they'll have basic I mean basic shop equipment yes you know nobody's gonna nobody in their right mind is gonna expect a tech to go out and buy an AC machine you know things like that you would be surprised though where there's a big misconception guys think that shops supply everybody with scanners not really the case not all the time uh, I've worked in shops where they've had one uh, or I've been in shops or whatever where there have been you know one scan tool there's an old uh, modus or something not updated uh, parts you know <laughs> things missing you know keys missing when they use the keys you know just all kinds of stuff so what I found and I truly believe with my heart is that most guys in the industry or in any industry do not respect equipment as much if they don't pay for it okay that's just the way I see it because I've lived it they they will beat on and drop and lose and run over tools and equipment that they don't pay for you know what I mean they'll just leave it in a car um, you know things like that happen so a lot of shops will have one scanner like I said it may not be up to date it may not do everything you need it to do you will have to decide at that point are you going to buy your own stuff some shops nowadays that I've heard of are requiring techs to buy their own scan tools they're not going to supply them and I know plenty that uh, that actually do that they have to buy their own scan tools and they spend tens of thousands of dollars you know what I mean you buy the tools uh, then a year or two down the road you have to update the tool you know it's not cheap so this is what shops go through this is also what techs go through so if the tech is not making enough money to warrant buying his own stuff where does that leave him right is he good enough to warrant you know getting the money that he requires to pay for these tools you understand what I'm saying it's like a cycle so there's there's a lot there's a lot to this business guys um, you know it's not just walking into a place and start turning wrenches those days are those days are long gone um, you know the diagnostic end of it has become uh, has become much more difficult now than it was years ago you know years ago you had basically you know even though systems were different and cars were different they were basically all the same in the sense that the simplicity behind them uh, you had you know basic fuses relays switches things like that for you know interior body control stuff now you have switches you know sending um, you know information to a module the module interpreting that data and you know based on all kinds of other inputs and other modules talking to it it decides what it's going to do 
in that situation there's there's a lot of there's a lot involved and I, I mean I'm just talking here but there's there's a ton of things you know what I'm saying they're involved nowadays in diagnosing a simple problem when years ago a simple problem legitimately was a simple thing to diagnose you know a screwdriver um, you know a little pocket screwdriver right uh, you know a test light uh, basic in incandescent test light a multimeter uh, you know even years ago without a multimeter you could get by most of the time uh, you didn't have to check complex circuits or you know things that were not 12 volts or ground so a test light would get you by nowadays you have 5 volt uh, you know for many years now you have 5 volt reference circuits you have uh, you have uh, pulse width modulated controls you have um, uh, you know all different types of uh, signals that you have to check data lines uh, you need a scope uh, the scope will become your best friend in many situations once you learn to use it proficiently. Uh, I still learn new things every day with the oscilloscope. It's the best tool all around that you can have, and that's, that's the truth for diagnostic work. It's the best tool you can have, um, aside from the brain, right? But you have, to have, uh, you have to have the right equipment to do the job. It's just the way it is. So if you get in, again, uh, to, re to, to reflect a bit, Expect to train, especially when you're new, a lot. Train a lot. Well, I was lucky enough when I was younger, when I got in with Joe, that there was a Mechanics Education Association that was close to us. It was about a 20-minute drive. They were a school-slash-tech support line. They had a number of guys working there that would instruct. So you would get a calendar every month. And I'm sure that Keith, is, uh, if he's watching, is going to chime in on this. Uh, you know, you had multiple guys teaching. It was, it was a great idea when they started this school. So you, you would get a class calendar every month and you would pick, uh, you know, whatever class, whatever night that you wanted to go to. And it was included for the shop in the fee, every, the monthly fee of the, of the, um, uh, for the school, right? So along with the fee, you got free classes, technically free classes, right? They were included. And then you got your tech support. If you ran into a problem with a car, you were able to call them and you could work with one of the guys on diagnosing the vehicle. And these guys were very good. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about those guys. I was lucky that we had them. They were, they were fantastic to deal with, to talk to. Uh, they, they became friends. So I would go, uh, you know, I would go to work. I would pick my classes. I would call, you would call them up and... Uh, you would tell them, you know, I want to take this class, that class, they'd sign up for it. And you'd go up to the school after work, about 6 o'clock, start your class, and, uh, you know, be there till whatever, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, whenever it ended. And uh, take a notebook with you at the time, you know, and uh, take notes, gather your information. And you'd be surprised at how many times those, you know, those classes, when I would go back to the work, you know, the next day or the next week, that stuff that I learned would come into play. And I was like, wow, I know this, you know, like I know this system now, like I understand it, you know, how it works. And my life became so much easier because suddenly I had an understanding of the things that I didn't know before. The more you do that, the more you crave it, uh, the more you want to learn. Um, they were, they were godsend. I love that place. And I miss that place, honestly, uh, you know, but nothing's forever. So that's that those guys are gone now, you know, the school's gone now. Uh, but if you guys have something like that in your area, take up, man, pay for it. It's worth it. You know, uh, to talk to your shop into paying for it. It's fantastic to have classes at your fingertips like that is just, uh, it's, it's great. I wish they would do something like that again around my area. Um, some of the shops through their parts organizations have their own training as well that they'll send you to that's local. Uh, some of the places around here have it, so it's, it's pretty cool. You know, it'll be like a dinner sometimes or whatever. You go there and you do your training, you have dinner with the guys and, you know, be on your way. But training is paramount. Equipment and tools are paramount. You're going to spend money on them. And that doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced level tech. Uh, any of these guys that are out there that are doing the YouTube videos will tell you the same thing that I'm telling you. You will spend for a fortune on tools. Uh, I would be afraid to add up what I have in my shop that I had to buy. I would be literally terrified to add up what I have. 
and uh, I don't have a lot compared to some of these other guys. So that'll that should tell you something. There's there's a there's a whole gackle of stuff that you need, and you always need new stuff for new vehicles. So my advice is, in closing here, if you really want to be a tech, find yourself a school, go to that school, put everything you have mentally into that training, and when you come out, put yourself out there, try to get into a good shop where you can continue to learn and continue to hone your abilities. And B, buy stuff that you need. Don't throw money away on tools you're never gonna use. Uh, I've done it in the past, I've bought stuff. That's something I wanna touch on for new techs. Uh, I saw something and I thought it would be a great tool to own and I bought it and I found that it was a piece of crap, that it really had no use. Um, you know, talk to other technicians before you throw money on something you're not sure of. If it's something you know you need, of course, by all means buy it. But I'm just telling you, you're gonna, there's plenty of uh, tools and equipment you're going to need that are going to make your life easier. So buy those. Don't throw your money away on stuff that isn't going to help you. And that includes toolboxes. If I had it to do over again, I would never spend the money again that I spent when I bought my toolbox. Um, I've had it for many years. It's in great shape as far as you know durability. It's, it's, it's great. It was way too expensive. Way too expensive. You can get, buy a lower name brand or a no name brand or whatever you consider it to be nowadays. It's not a Snap-on, it's not a Mac, it's not a you know, Matco. Um, you can buy a cheaper toolbox for, oh God, probably, probably a, oh God, I don't even know, probably like one-fifth the money or less that, that some of these boxes cost and still have something that is a toolbox. It you know, works, it's big enough, it, the drawers you know, open and close, everything works and you didn't put yourself in hock for years to pay for it, all right? Um, and I personally know guys that have spent thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a toolbox. I'm not exaggerating, all right? I didn't spend that much, but I, I spent far too much anyway. You can buy cheaper stuff. You do not have to buy, it's, it's a toolbox. It's not a house, it's not a car, it's a toolbox. It's, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, when, they, when I bought mine years ago, they were, they were advertising that the locks are bulletproof, you know what I mean? Um, I, I could pick those locks if I wanted to, you know, what a basic lock pick said, I can, I can pick those locks. So there's nothing that's, uh, you know, it, advertising is everything, basically. Is the box junk? No. The box is fantastic. It's heavy duty. It is as advertised, okay? But is it necessary? That's what you have to ask yourself. In my opinion, no. Maybe when you're 21, when I, like when I bought my box, yeah, I had to have it. No, it's not necessary. Buy something cheaper especially if you're new to this industry, please buy a cheap toolbox, a cheaper toolbox. You can always get something else later if it's, you know, if it's not big enough, whatever. Don't go and spend 20 grand on a toolbox when you get into this industry. And I've seen it, I've seen guys do it. I've seen a guy in the, in the industry for six months, a year, and he jumps on the truck. You know, somebody, you know, one of the guys pulls in with the truck and Oh man, I gotta have a, you know, I want a box, you know, this and that. And they build a box for you on the computer and yeah, you know, the next thing you know, you're paying, you know, you're you're basically paying for the rest of your life. So I don't recommend that because then there's the guys that don't stay in the industry and they have a thirty thousand dollar box and then they're trying to sell it and they're getting low ball offers from guys for five grand. You know what I mean? So don't don't put yourself in that situation. Just be smart. If you're gonna get in the industry and you really think you're gonna stay, still don't buy an expensive toolbox. It's not worth it. Spend the money, I'd rather to spend the money on the equipment than the toolbox itself. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you could get a big toolbox for fairly cheap money uh, and now you could have a place to put your expensive equipment and equipment that's gonna make you money. So that's my opinion, my advice on becoming a tech today. You're going to be worked. Uh, it's, it's hard work, make no mistake about it. It takes a lot of dedication. It costs you money. Um, you're gonna have days that are very frustrating. You're gonna wonder why you got into this industry. These are all the truth. I mean, every guy's asked himself that, what am I doing? We love it, that's why we do it. So, you know, no matter what comes across, like the, the things that we see, some of the dumb things that we see in the field, some of the insanity that we run across with dealing with people, it's, you know what, we love it. It's, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. So. Uh, if you love this stuff, you love cars, you love working on them, 
you really want to do it, go for it, guys. There's, there's money to be made. Uh, it's definitely a career, but you have to treat it as a career. You can't treat it as a stepping stone. You know, if you really like it, um, I recommend trying it, you know, uh, but just be prepared for the things that I've told you. I'm not lying to you. Um, if you really want to get in this industry, get familiar with wiring diagrams. Love wiring diagrams. Like, love them. Because they're going to they're gonna be something you're going to use constantly nowadays for diagnosing. And um, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna need it. So, guys, I don't know really what else to say. I didn't have anything that... I, I've thought about this for a few days and I really couldn't prepare anything specific to write out and, you know, pass on to you guys. I'm just kind of going off what I... The things that come to my mind when somebody asks me that question. So that's really what I'm going through. If you have any specific questions other than this, you, you're welcome to ask in the comments below. I'll try to answer as best I can. Uh, you know, I'm trying to give you very honest advice and honest thoughts on the questions that, were, that I was asked. Uh, that's really all I can do, you know. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, I appreciate all you guys' emails and, you know, support and comments and everything. Um, we're trying to, I've been trying to get some more videos out, uh, lately I've been a little jammed up, forgive me for that, I have a house in shambles right now that I'm working on, and, uh, you know, with the holidays and stuff, it's been a little tough, so, uh, I'll try to get more stuff more consistently out, uh, to you guys, but, uh, likes, comments, don't forget to hit the, uh, subscribe button, ring the bell, uh, so you get all of our latest videos, and um, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Thanks for your time.